12 years in that division and they're out. Hey guys, welcome back to See Those Can Fly. This is the final episode of the entire series, 46 in total. You guys have heard that intro 46 times now if you've watched from day one. It's the final day of the season. We've got Barcelona in the Champions League final. It doesn't get any bigger than this. We've already won the Premier League. We've won the League Cup and the Super Cup this season. Tied to all the other trophies that we've won. And can we finish it off in style? Let's have a quick look down memory lane and see where what got us to this stage. So the club, um, back when it was known as Scarborough, rather than Scarborough Athletic, were relegated in 2005-06 from the National League. They were relegated in 06-07 from the National League North, and that's when they went bust all the way down to the Northern Counties East. The clubs had a rise back up. We took over in 2019-20 and we got an instant promotion. We've had back to back to back to back to back promotions to get us from level seven all the way to the top flight. We've won two trophies every single season. As you can see here, we won the FA Cup in 2025. That's back when we were in the championship. We won the Europa League in 2026, our first season in the Premier League because we qualified for winning the FA Cup. We've won every single division, every trophy that there is to win other than the Club World Cup because, of course, we can't get into that just yet. Possibly next season, though. And now, if we can lift the Champions League, I'll have won every single trophy we possibly can. This has been the perfect save for me. I've never had it so good in a save before. Not even the last time I attempted to take Scarborough Athletic back in 2012 all the way to the higher reaches. We won the Champions League back then. Can we do the same now? We'll have to wait and see. But before we do, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell button to be notified of new episodes as and when they go live because of course with the new game coming out, hopefully towards the end of November, maybe the start of December, we'll have to see when that is. Uh, there'll be loads more content coming then. I am gonna take a break after this episode, I'm afraid to say. Uh, so you'll all have to miss me daily. I need to have a little bit of a rest and recuperate. But before we start looking at the final itself let's catch up on what happened off camera after we drew against Real Madrid away from home 3-3 we beat West Ham 5-0 smashed them to smithereens Dylan Munro with a couple of goals Jones Stevens, and Alvarado scoring we then went on to beat Norwich 4-2 away from home I was surprised how easily we won this match. Zelenkov's managing two penalties. Um, and we also beat Leicester 3-2, Arsenal 2-1. I honestly thought these games here would maybe get one win, two possibly, with a few draws. But I did not think we would win every single game to crown us as Centurions. 15 points clear of Man United. We really did do it in style. Stevens top goal scorer with 23 goals. Alvarado, second on the assist charts with 11. And to be honest, it's the squad's depth that has made all the difference this season. Like I said, we've already got the League Cup in the bag. Can we make it a famous treble? Liverpool won the FA Cup. They're the team that knocked us out in the semi-final of that competition, which means that we're not going to have an opportunity to do the unprecedented quadruple. But I'll be more than happy with beating Barcelona today. They've got a fantastic side. They've got Haaland up top. They've got Fatty on the wing, who looks like a real exciting player. And they're going to be playing a 4-1-4. One. Like I say, Fatty cutting inside, a Sun Shao cutting inside also. They've got Hamad Traore as a Mazala. He's going to go into that space by the looks of it that's going to be vacated by Sun Chao as he cuts inside. I'm not going to pronounce that name again because that's terrible. Hussein is going to be playing in the playmaking role in the middle. He plays to my French team as well, a cracking little player. At the back, they've got a real strong back line. Lirola is going to be overlapping out wide as well as Miranda. 
cracking little wonder kid at the start of the game. Lengley is going to be at the centre of defence. While he may not look fantastic, it's his all-round ability that makes him such a great player. 7.26 average rating this season for him. And then we've got Skriniar, the 32-year-old, who is a bit of a giant at the back. It's going to be a real tough game, this. I'm going to stick with Decoy, though. I know this probably isn't the wisest decision when you look at Barcelona's formation and how they may be lining up. However, I do feel like this has been a big game system. It's worked very well in Europe, so we're going to give it a crack. And if I change system and we end up dabbling our way out of the competition, I'll be gutted and always questioning whether I should have stuck with the system that had worked all season long. We've got a pretty strong back lines. Zelenkovs is coming in on the left instead of Malé, though. Malé is a makeshift centre-back. Uh, I feel like Zelenkovs has been in far better form, and we're going to go with the form players today. Brignoni is one of our best centre-backs. He's going to be playing alongside Storico, likewise. Not the greatest in the air, but I'm not so sure that that's going to matter too much today. We've got Bazunu in goal. He has been the stalwart. He's played every single game all season long. Agasea, you all saw what he did in the semi-final with that long shot, two of them actually from outside the area. He hopefully will be a big game player for us today. Grasso's going to do the same from the right side. And then we've got Mariba, who is not match fit because of his injury that you saw in the last couple of episodes. He's been out for five weeks alongside Lemur. Both of them are going to be the playmakers linking up play from defence to attack. Lemur again, he's been out for five weeks. Both of them twisted their ankle. Silveira is in behind with that dribbling technique and speed. Then we've got Munro, who's going to be the pressing forward, closing them down, hopefully forcing a mistake for Stevens to get in behind and hopefully stick the ball in the back of the net. Right, guys, I've spoken more than enough now. Let's get this thing underway. I'm quite nervous, I will be honest. Um, this is the final episode. I'd love to go out in style, but at the end of the day, big games, you just never know what's going to happen. I'm going to tell the lads to go out there and prove a point. Um, it goes a little bit against the team meeting that I did, where I told them that there's no pressure. But I always find that relaxing them before the match works well. And it doesn't really matter if the team talk clashes with that. We're going to watch this on a little bit slower highlights than usual. So that I can commentate without rushing. And talk of the devil, we have the first opportunity. It's a long throw. Georges Grasso, the winger, throws the ball in. Lemur picks it up to Agasea over the bar. Unfortunately, guys, Dylan Munro has pulled up with a hamstring problem. And he's just been sent off as well. So that's great. So we are now down to 10 men inside of 15 minutes because Dylan Munro's had two bookings inside of 15 minutes. I said he'd break up play, but I didn't think he'd do that. Well, that's really not ideal at all, guys, because unfortunately, with that pressing forward, who is on a support role, ooh, they nearly scored there, um, not on the pitch, it means that Stevens isn't going to be able to get in behind as easily because the pressing forward does drop a little bit deeper and he does pull the centre-backs out of position. Anzu Fatty making a good tackle there. He came under pressure though, and Stevens, oh, how did he miss? How did you miss that? Useless. The 42nd minute, and Barcelona in behind here with Anzu Fatty. Haaland's all on his own and he can't do it. Out for a throw-in and the highlights over. We're approaching half-time. But to be honest, we've been the better team, in my opinion. But we are down to 10 men. So, And with those two central midfielders being very jaded um, due to the fact they haven't been playing any football with their injuries, we're probably going to have to make a couple of substitutions. The first is going to be Stevens because he has been awful today. Um, and then the second one may have to be one of the central midfielders and we'll probably bring Grasso off as well, I think. Talk of the devil, there's Grasso with a long throw. Ball's come back out to him. Chips one into Agasea. And Barcelona could be on for the counter-attack here with Haaland. Erling Haaland, he's run straight through the middle and then just passes it virtually to Bazunu. Another highlight, Barcelona throw the ball long. Haaland picks that one up with ease. Switches it out wide to Anzu Fati. We picked him out as a danger man in the last episode. He was the one I was mainly worried about. And that's why, but he can't find the pass. Again, we're missing bodies up top now. So when we are clearing the ball forward, we haven't got enough there to pick it up. I'm wondering whether we should maybe um, change the AMC to a striker. Not sure. Lirola, the right back, goes on the overlap. 
some good covering there for Magasea, but Fatty's been found, and that is one hell of a goal. What a finish from Anzu Fatty. 1-0. That is a goal worthy of winning a Champions League, that. Grasso, Georges Grasso, that is, to Agasea, and he scored. That was a complete howler of defending from Barcelona, but it's 1-1. Andre Agasea turns up again and gets the all-important equaliser. Right, guys, I've paused it. We're now going to make a couple of changes. Stevens is going to come out for Belkayat. I'm going to have Georges Grasso out for Yusuga. We all know he's a big game player. And I'm probably going to have, I think, Lemur out for Meyer. That should do it. All three changes made. Let's see if we can't at least get to extra time and drag this final out. Ten minutes remaining. We've had two clear-cut chances and a half chance. Barcelona have had one clear-cut chance all game. We have been the better team despite being down by a man. And they're going to go through the entire team here with the substitute Trincao, but thankfully it hits the ball wide. They've gone to a 4-2-3-1 now as well, which is a bit of a, a concern because that's the sort of tactic that we do struggle against. Meyer has already been booked and almost ends up with another one. Anzu Fati could have finished us off there, but he misses. Literally minutes remaining now. We're almost there, guys, into extra time. Um, 92nd minute I think we're on and Barcelona could afford one more opportunity unless we can press them into a mistake and a counter-attack. Lirola out wide to Trincao, he's dodged his man, he's in behind, good tackle and well saved there by Silveras. Behind for a corner which we're not going to get to see, we are into extra time chaps. Let's just get this one kicked off. We've got no substitutes left. There's not a lot I can do, to be honest. I think we're just going to play this out as it is. I don't think we've played that badly, in all honesty. Sterico on a booking. Out wide to Yusugu, just loses the ball to De Jong. Marin, Miranda, Triori, they're really playing with us now. Anzu Fati, that man advantage is definitely working in their favour. Um, we're struggling. Uh, we really are struggling. Frankie Dion's come off the bench as well. That's a good save by Bazunu. It's a corner here for Barcelona. Trincao crosses. Meyer manages to deal with it. Back out to Trincao again, though. He has been all over us since he's come on. I think we're going to see if it'll let me make one more change. Let's have a go. It will. Brilliant. Right, we're going to get Palm on up front into that pressing forward role and hope that he can maybe make a difference. Traore switches back to De Jong. De Jong still down a little bit on the ball, but he's found Lengley. They're not getting many players in behind us by playing a 4-2-3-1 here. And Yusuga's dispossessed them. He's got speed, and he gets brought down by Miranda. Now, how is that not a booking? How can you not book him for that? It's a blatant foul and breaking up play. Almost at half-time, in extra time, chaps, as Yusuga picks up the ball. He's not quite sure what to do with it because he doesn't have that AMC to pick out. But Mayer manages to get out wide to Agasea. I think we've done better since bringing on the striker. And Agasea almost does it again from long range. Well, that's half-time, extra time, guys. We've had 16 shots, five of which are on target. Two clear-cut, two half chances. Barca have had three clear-cut chances now, though. That man advantage is definitely telling. And then going to a 4-2-3-1, I think, has been a big Big part to play in the way this match has panned out. Uh, 118 minutes. We've still got about another, what, 12 minutes left. And Traore brings the ball forward. because gets dispossessed by Meyer. Hard working midfielder. But he gives the ball away. Haaland, Trincao, they've completely overloaded us there. And I'll tell you what, Bazunu probably deserves man of the match with the way he's played. He's saved us time and time again so far. Ball back in over the top. Looping head of Bazunu gathers that comfortably. I'm going to demand more of the lads. We may have one more opportunity here with five seconds remaining from the long throw. Yusuga launches one in. Belkayat back to Yusuga. One more chance. One more. Oh, I don't believe it. Well, come on, ref. Blow the whistle. Blow the whistle. We're 15 seconds now over, and he has done. Thank God for that. Right, we're into penalties, guys. You all know my approach here. I don't assign penalty takers. I let them pick themselves, and usually it sees us right. Mariba to take the first penalty. Dispatches. That was close, though. Erling Haaland takes the first one for Barcelona. The Norwegian. Which way will he go? He went to the keeper's right, and he scores. 
Meyer, who hasn't had the best game in all fairness, he's misplaced quite a few passes, doesn't mess up with the penalty, that's 2-1. Anzu Fati, the guy who made the difference, he got their first goal, he's been fantastic all game, and he scores as well, that's 2-2 now. Who is going to make the first mistake? Hopefully not Agasea, he's only 19 years old, he's a young lad, but he's a big game player. Oh, he doesn't turn up for that. Oh, I don't believe it. Trincao. Come on, Bazunu. Save it. <sighs> he scores. Palm. Off the bench. Please score. Get in. Top corner. Right, we need a save here from Bazunu. Come on. Save it. Save it. Get in there. Get in. He's been fantastic all final and he's turned up there. Zelenkovs, he scored two penalties in uh, the game against West Ham. Is he going to get another one here? Yes, he is. I don't believe it. If Bazunu saves this, we have won the Champions League final. All the pressure is on Bazunu. Look how slowly he's walking to his line. Oh, come on. Bazunu, it's all on you. All on you. Eight seasons worth of a game, and he's done it. He didn't save it, but they hit the post. We've won the Champions League, despite going down to ten men after eight seasons. We've won every single trophy. We've done the treble this season. That's it for the series, guys, and what a way to finish. Beating Barcelona on penalties in dramatic style. We almost lost it. We almost went out, but we were still the better team until that extra man advantage told. But it doesn't matter. We've done it. We've lifted the European Champions League. In a bit of a state of shock, I didn't think we would do that, to be honest, and especially going down to 10 men so early in the match. But we've got over the line. I've actually done it as the 79th best team in the world according to the coefficients. And if you have a look at club reputation, we're the 9th best team in the world. Barcelona would be in the final the first. Liverpool, who would be in the quarter final, the second best. Real Madrid, a third. We beat them in the semi. So it is completely undisputed that we had the toughest running in that competition so to go on and win it the way we did is absolutely amazing let's pay a little bit of respect to some of the players who made it all happen starting with the goal scorers joey stevens what a player 35 goals and 10 assists i think the cats just caught some trouble downstairs um, he came this season 33 million and was fantastic. Munro turned up yet again with 25 goals and 10 assists. He's played for the last two seasons. He was our best player last season. Only signed for just under 16 million. yusuga has been amazing this season with 17 and 16 assists. We got him for under a million um, while we were playing in the championship. And of course, next up is Christian Palm, who's been a bit part player. Very often came on off the bench, uh, but he's managed 14 goals and 5 assists in all competitions. Belkaya, not being the greatest player in all honesty so far, but going forward he could be exceptional. He's only 18 years old, bear in mind. Um, but one of the biggest players for me is Andre Agasea. He's been such a massive player in the big games, this guy. We got him last season for 40 million, a huge amount of money, release clause paid, but I think he could be the next Lionel Messi if he keeps progressing the way he is. We've also got massive thanks to give to the likes of Alvarado. He got 19 assists, adding to his nine goals. Um, he was bought for a pittance uh, from the Costa Rican team, Saprisa. And I think Grasso deserves a special mention as well. 16 assists from the right-hand side. He turned up in the big matches and all. Been with us for four, three seasons now. Signing for six million back in the championship season where he managed to score 18 goals and seven assists. His second season, he got 15 and 11. And this season, he only managed five, but 16 assists, most importantly. They're the key players, guys. They're the ones that have made it all happen. And they're the ones that are going to see the save out. The likes of Matthew Wardle is the last man standing from the class of 2020. And he's going to be sold in the summer. He has been a stalwart for the club. Um, signed back in 2020. Look at that. All the way through. Every single division with us, just about. Bar the first one. 
you can't really ask for a better servant to the club than that. And he's signed for £25 million to the German team Leipzig. So he's also made us a massive profit as well. Right, guys, I'm going to leave the episode there. Thank you so much for following the series. Really do appreciate it. If you've enjoyed this series, give us a thumbs up as well. That really does help the channel. And subscribe and hit the bell button to get notified of the new episodes when they do go live. We're kind of probably going to be a while now before I do release anything nearer the release date of FM21. But follow us on Twitter and look on footballmanagerstory.com. There's going to be loads of updates coming up there with any news of the new game. As and when it happens, we will be the first ones to release it. Okay, guys, thank you so much again. Much appreciated. All the support you've given me for the whole series, 46 episodes. And I will see you for the next one. See you later.